Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with some more Dragalia Lost. Today's video, I'll be talking about uh, this month in Dragalia Lost. I think from what I've heard from people, it's a much shorter one, but you know, you never know. Look over it, talk about it a little bit, do all that good stuff, and let, you know, give my thoughts about it. And if you end up enjoying this, please leave a like. Uh, likes are a good way for let me know when I do good and when I do bad. The previous video, which I did with people, which you can check out, by the way, because I think it'll be... I don't know if it'll be featured at the end of this, but anyway, you should check it out. I had a lot of fun recording it. It was perhaps too silly, because it has... I think it's one of my most disliked videos, but it's okay, because there's a lot of likes on it, too, anyway. Um, so let's go into it. Like I said, like if you end up liking it. Subscribe if you want more videos from me. Um, currently, I'm in a lot of Dragalia and uh, uh, Pokemon, but anyway, I digress. Let's get into it. All right, so this month in Dragalia, they're talking about a dash of disaster. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the events that are currently live. I'm here to talk about a dash of disaster as well as other things that are upcoming in Dragalia Lost. Uh, in this event, you get a facility that boosts the stats of Laden and Wan adventurers. Also, Valerio, an adventurer who appears in the Summon Showcase, has a special mechanic that allows him to switch between three stances. Uh, very cool, by the way. These stances change his normal attacks and skills. He's a strong adventurer, even if you don't switch between stances, but he gets even stronger when you switch between stances based on the situation. Valerio can inflict frostbite on enemies uh, with one of his skills. It's This is actually kind of true, because I think currently people are trying to figure out like his DPS, and it's actually super hard to figure out what he's doing, just because he, he plays so weird. Uh, and... Whoa, wait, wait, one moment. Sorry, trying to make it so the crows, the crow, the rooster stopped going, but it's just going to keep going. All right, let's get back into it. Um, I hope you enjoy it, play the subtle differences and how he controls depending on his stance. I also want to point out that Valerio's second skill, Bon Appetit, applies a new effect called Inspiration to Adventurers. If an adventurer inspiration increases to stage 5, the next skill effect is guaranteed to be critical. The Dragon Nim Nimus has a special skill which extends shapeshift time, allowing you to deal tons of damage when you shapeshift. And part two of the summon showcase will- uh, wow, no mention of people? He's everyone's favorite vegetable. It's fine, he wasn't featured in the adventure showcase either. Part two of the summon showcase will start with the near future. It'll feature Mitsuba, an adventurer who appears in the event. Like Valero, Mitsuba can switch between two different stances, which change her normal attacks and skills. These are called Sashimi stance and tempura stance and they'll let us know later and of course if you played the event you know who this is let me see is there any hint of a potential other character no none that i can say i mean they could do that kind of dicky um uh chef guy in the story but i don't know if he's worthy of even a four maybe a three i don't know we'll see um, we're also planning on adjusting the autoplay feature for adventures and dragons that have unique control options so look forward to that in the future I really hope that means that in the future, uh, maybe in auto you'll finally actually go dragon because auto currently doesn't do that. I would look, I would like that very much because currently autoplay, it works perfectly fine, but man, sometimes the AI is just too dumb. All right, next, adventurers with mana spirals unlocked. We unlocked the mana spiral for three more adventurers. As their mana spirals are unbound, the four strikes of Shadow Attuned Adventurers Cleo and Nefaria gain an effect that removes one buff from enemies. This effect will be useful against bosses like those in Nagito Uprising. That's true. Cleo's really good and Nefaria's like crazy. Her like, her buff was insane because I would not, I'm not going to lie to you and it's going to be a real shame because that reroll video I did, Nefaria was one of the worst units in the game from the launch and ended up, up until now. And it's kind of crazy how she's really been done justice by her mana spiral. Meanwhile, the water attuned Xanfri gains the ability to inflict frostbite with his skills and does more damage against frostbitten enemies, which greatly increases the damage he can deal. Um, not I don't have much to say about Xanfri, just mainly because I don't think he currently fits. I haven't been able to use him, to be fair, but I don't think he currently fits into HBH at all. But it's also because people are memeing it up with people right now. So it's not his fault that he was literally overshadowed. Um, of course, when the Agito battle comes up, I bet Frostbite will kind of help play into it. Because it feels, especially with like the way Nefaria and Cleo were built, and the way that they help out with Agito, I bet his buff will do the same. All these adventures have been in the game since launch, so you should try using them when you have more power to see how much more powerful they've become. If you can unlock all their mana spiral, that is. 
This was announced recently, but I want to reiterate that it's taking some time to make adjustments for the Shadow of Tune 3 adventure. Oops, sorry, excuse me. Uh, three adventures whose mana spirals will be unlocked, so you'll have to wait a little longer for them. Thank you for your patience. Sure. Uh, the Aikido Uprising. I think this is just talking about specifically the Aikido Uprising and their bosses. How you can craft six weapon. Yeah, here's their, like, if you've never played Expert, which I haven't, this is their second forms. Which is kind of funny to be like, oh, here's their second forms. They're supposed to be a surprise. Um, enemy behavior and other factors in the Aikido Uprising are designed to make these quests a little more approachable than advanced dragon trials. In terms of difficulty... To make these battles even more accessible, we'll also continue to release Chimera enemies and Chimera weapons to the applicable en uh, element when it implements these battles going forward. Uh, which is good, because I actually like the Aikido battles way better than High Dragon Trials, especially Master. Master, I haven't tried it yet, but all the war stories I hear is just like very, very tough. Uh, yeah, and they're basically telling you, like, oh, you can prepare for Advanced Dragon Trials by following the Phantom, Chimera, Agito, Advanced Dragon Trial pattern. So if you're having trouble clearing Advanced Dragon Trials, try starting with the Agito. That's interesting, though, because it's funny because the Agito weapons, I think, are better than Advanced Dragon Trial weapons. But I guess they're trying to say is get the weapon from Agito, help yourself beat the Advanced Dragon Trial, get a better weapon from there, and then use that weapon to help you beat Agito on the higher difficulty. I guess that's their logic behind it. Um, events this month, we'll be reviewing the Skyborne Spectacle Braid event in mid-March. This will be, I think, the third time it's come back. Or uh, the second time to come back. This is the second rerun. We're also planning to unlock the adventurer Su Fong's um, Mana Spiral, so if you haven't played this event, don't miss your chance to add him to your team. All right. We're adding the Mana Spiral for two other adventurers at this time. One of these adventures will be Hawk. Be on the lookout for more information via notifications. Ooh, Hawk. Uh, speaking of like bad units, Nefaria was bad. Hawk was equally as bad as her. I would say worse just because his mechanic was worse than um, Blind was. Uh, so I'm really interested to see if they can give him the same treatment as Nefaria and see if he ends up being like one of the most damaging dealing units. In terms of who can be the other wind unit, I think there were data mines that gave out some names, so it could be a good number of them. If they want to do another five, it could be Lin Yu, because uh, especially because she, I think she was also in this event, so it would make a lot of sense if it was Lin Yu and Hawk. Hawk because he's what he's the worst win unit in the entire game. And I would even throw in threes and fours, which is not fair because there's a lot of bad threes and fours. Well, pre mana spiral that is. There's also a lot of good ones, by the way. Um, we will be adding an uh, interlude. We added an interlude in chapter 11 in January, and in March we'll be adding one to chapter 12. This interlude, interlude will be crucial for the future of the story, so be sure to check it out. As of this month, it will have been one and a half years since the release of Dragalia Loss. We're planning some events at the end of March to celebrate the anniversary. We're also planning to release a Dragalia Digest where we'll talk about a version update at the end of March and the future of Dragalia Loss. Keep an eye out for notifications with more detailed scheduled information. So right here, when we get this Drag Dragalia Digest, I bet you anything, this is when we're going to learn the next crossover. They're going to reveal the Gala Banner for this specific um, anniversary because we're due one, I think, this month. So they're probably going to wait till it's literally near the 1.5 year anniversary. And that will be um, our thing. It will probably be tied to the story. I need to actually check out the story to see who it could be. Um, last Gala Banner was Luca, who played a pivotal role in the previous chapter, which was the Android Uprising. So I expect the same. Uh, that's going to be interesting. And I really hope there will be another crossover. But with who? Hard to know, to be fair. We'll figure it out. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Since adding the Revive and Mentor bonus features to January's update, we've received feedback that it becomes easier to clear high-difficulty quests, and I was happy to see that our data also shows that more players are challenging in clearing these quests. That said, we've also seen cases where players who haven't cleared the quest before and players who want to get the Mentor bonus are having trouble matching because it is hard to convey what the wish to accomplish for the room's objectives. This leads to players with different objectives being matched up, so we'd like to fix this on a future update by adding additions for room creation. creation. Which would be good, because it's actually kind of a mess. Starting from Chapter 12 of the main campaign, we introduce a change of gameplay where players must complete endeavors to progress. 
These endeavors also serve as hints about how to clear quests, and we plan to continue implementing these updates to gameplay moving forward. There are a lot of fa facets to upgrading and Dragalia Lost, so we have to convey this information to the player bit by bit as they progress through the main campaign so it's not overwhelming. In conclusion, if I summon this right here, I already got all those, and we'll see you for April. Hmm, that's kind of it. I mean, yeah, it seems like kind of a light month, uh, so let me see. If we sum it up, part two of Badasha Disaster, not sure if it's actually part two of an event or part two of a summon. We'll see how that plays out. And then we get a rerun, and then <laughs> currently nothing until the end of March, so that's not really much to really chew on. I've definitely felt like previous this month and Dragalias were more helping and knowing what's up with Dragalia, but they're obviously all saving it for this right here. They want to play it close to the vest. So I get it. We'll see what's up. I don't know if there's been any, like, real leaks towards it, but I don't know. I know what I definitely want for 1.5 year, which would be a uh, Mana Spiral for Gala Mim. Uh, that'd be nice. If anything, I'm, I would actually- maybe, you know what, I'll do a separate video about what I want for the 1.5 year anniversary. Um, and maybe I'll ask some other people, like, hey, what do you feel would be cool for 1.5 year? My dog's barking, so that means it's time to end the video. If you like this video and you want more from me, make sure to leave a like. Uh, subscribe to me, of course. Check out my other videos. I'm currently doing a Silver Nuzlocke. It's a lot of fun. Oh, right. God damn, dog. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone, and have a nice day, and I'll see you in whatever video you decide to watch for me. Goodbye.